Welcome to History Bedtime Stories in our pajamas in bed. And tonight is night number six of our series on presidential pets. Night number six, president number six, we're talking about John Quincy Adams, the first president to be the son of a former president. His parents were John and Abigail Adams. He serves as president from 1825 to 1829. And when it comes to presidential misinformation, badly reported pet history, the John Quincy Adams alligator story may take the cake. So there is this story that has been floating around, particularly on the internet, for a like a long, long time, like a confusingly long amount of time. And it says that the Marquis de Lafayette, the Revolutionary War hero, friend of George Washington, on his 24 state United States tour in 1824 that lasted into 1825 is gifted an alligator which he takes to the White House and gives to John Quincy Adams. John Quincy Adams is like, this is awesome. I'm gonna scare all my guests. He puts this alligator, which some stories say is as long as 15 feet, in the unfinished, still being built East Room and its attached bathroom where it's got a tub to sort of play around in and Adams loves, loves not telling guests that they open the door to the bathroom and there is this 15 foot alligator. Besides that being ridiculously dangerous, it's not true. It is completely made up. And unfortunately, this is one of those stories that grew legs and ran because it has made it into a documentation like the Presidential Pet Museum. It has been shown on the History Channel. It has made it into BuzzFeed articles. Not true. In fact, this story only dates back to 1958 when a book was published called The White House and Its 32 Families. And in it, they talk about John Quincy Adams receiving this alligator from the Marquis de Lafayette and keeping it in the bathroom to sort of scare people. It is unsubstantiated. In fact, the Quincy Adams Historical Society is working really hard to say that's not true. What turns out to be true is that an alligator was gifted to Lafayette and Lafayette gifted it to the American people to be included at a zoo being built. And somehow this all gets wrapped around to the East Room, completely untrue. The one sort of pet John Quincy Adams and his wife uh, actually do keep is silkworms. So the first lady, Louisa Adams, uh, likes to spin silk and then use it in her embroidery. She keeps silkworms on mulberry trees on the White House estate, harvests the silkworms, which there is some documentation to prove President John Quincy Adams was into this. In his journals, he actually counts the numbers of worms each season and lists them in a little chart, uh, sort of charting whether their population is growing or declining, growing seven of the eight years that he is president. But his wife, Louisa, is the one to harvest them and use them in her embroidery and stitchery. The mulberry trees are long gone from the White House and being that mulberry trees are the only food source for silkworms, we know the silkworms left when the mulberry uh, trees left, which pretty much looks to be the early 1910s. But the silkworms are a legacy of John Quincy Adams and Louisa Adams. And some of her embroidery can actually be seen in the Smithsonian Institute. Using silk thread, it is thought that she spun from the silkworms that were kept at the White House. I hope you're enjoying presidential pet history. Wash your hands, be kind to each other. We'll see you tomorrow night for night number seven.